cast your mind back to 1993, do you remember the hype which surrounded Jurassic Park? Because I do, and it was colossal. Much like a dinosaur. It was therefore inevitable that a range of games would follow for the consoles of the time. The Mega Drive version, developed by Blue Sky Software and released in August 1993, was a platformer, as was the Master System release, whilst the ocean-developed Nintendo releases took an endearing top-down approach, much like the Amiga iteration. But the Super Nintendo version, released in November 93, stood out in particular for the first-person perspective it adopts when you go inside. Oh no! Take that, Johnny T-Rex! There are various buildings to navigate, with the Visitor Center being one of the first you encounter. Within lie all sorts of Jurassic terrors, along with some eerie screeching sounds to evoke an atmosphere of unease. When I first saw this game reviewed on Bad Influence, I was sold. I didn't even own a Super Nintendo, but this created a huge incentive for me to obtain one. It was probably the first time I'd witnessed Doom-like gameplay on a 16-bit console, and it expanded my mind to the possibilities of these machines, and it was much better than the Mega CD's point-and-click version. I should also mention that the Amiga AGA version had some FPS elements also, but that's a story for another day. Now clearly I wasn't alone in my excitement, because thanks to one of my go-tos for news, IndieRetroNews.com, I came across Visitor Center. According to its own page, Visitor Center is a lovingly crafted cover of the first-person interiors from Jurassic Park on the Super Nintendo. Although updated for modern playability, it captures the spirit and challenge of the original game. So you begin in the middle of the Visitor Center. I'm using the keyboard for control, but you can also use a gamepad in this currently beta release. Developed by a gent called Jeff, who goes by the alias Progrium, this release doesn't include all the features anticipated for the final game, such as interacting fully with the computer terminals, like the original, or the swinging doors. But it has more than enough to excite my nostalgia gland. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got one of those. It's also pretty hard, you can't go shooting dinosaurs willy-nilly as you'll run out of ammo. Likewise, if you try and cattle prod them into annihilation, you'll end up almost inevitably toast. Created in Unity, there are four floor layouts within the game, all created on a flat grid, like games such as Wolfenstein 3D and Rise of the Triad. Jeff actually built a Unity editor extension that can reproduce the build engine used in Duke Nukem 3D and Shadow Warrior, and this is how Visitor Center got started. The in-game artwork is borrowed from the original Super Nintendo incarnation from screenshots, followed by some Photoshop tweaking. Interestingly, the original game distorts in-game assets when rendering through uneven pixelation. So Jeff made some changes to accommodate for this. You can find videos on how he achieved all this by following the link in the description, along with download links to the game, of course. For me, developments like this really show how even 24 years later, these games remain vivid in our minds. I mean, these older games are also easier to recreate in modern engines, but there has to be an underlying element of excitement there, and these 8 and 16-bit titles created and continue to create that even today. Playing this release now fills me with the same incredulity as when I first witnessed it way back in 1993.